Hey folks, it's Colin. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to talk about installing your template. We'll be installing it with Expression Web 4. Just a couple of tips. If if you're working with SharePoint Designer, just read through the um, the information. I'm only going to do a video demonstration for Expression Web 4 simply because the older software, not many people are using it anymore. And Expression Web 4 is now free. So it just makes sense to go and upgrade to the latest version. And as far as I'm concerned, from what I've seen with Expression Web 4, it'll be able to, it'll last for years. Even though it's free, Microsoft doesn't need to update it anymore because it does exactly what we need it to do for HTML5 and CSS3 and all those good things. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Let's go back to our desktop first though. What I want to do is take a look at the folder that was created. And I just want to share something with you first before we get started. Create a backup. Create a backup of the original website folder before you make any changes to the site and before you actually open it in your editor. Create a backup so that way if you ever delete a page or a file because you think you don't need it and you go, oh, nuts, I did need that page, you can just drag it in from your backup. Create a backup because if you have some sort of fat finger thing go on and you make an error that you didn't notice and you can't fix it, it's a lot faster to replace a page or replace a library file and start over than it is to try and find your error and fix it. Grab it from the backup, copy it over, start over again. Way faster. Trust me, when customers come to us for support and they want to know where they went wrong and how to fix things, we'll take a few minutes look through things and nine times out of ten we'll actually just replace the page of the file, copy the information over for them and get it done just because it's so much faster than trying to debug, analyze code, pull our hair out, that sort of a thing. So that's my advice. So let's take a look at how we do that. Go into the folder that was created when you extracted the file. Now in the previous video I dragged my zip file in here so I have a copy of it for later if I need it. But I'm going to click into my eternal blue white business folder and there's the website folder right there. Now if we look inside the website folder this is where the magic happens. This is where our pages are and the and the guts of the site and this is what we're going to define or open in our web editor. But before we do that we're going to make a copy of the website folder. Yep, just make a good old-fashioned copy and a good old-fashioned paste. Control C, Control V, right click, whatever your favorite method of copy and paste is. And then we're just going to rename it. Website hyphen original. If you can spell it right. There we go. Now, from here, we know that we've made, we haven't even touched this with our web editor yet. So if we need any files, whatnot, they're all clean. They haven't been uh, messed with whatsoever. <clears throat> Good. Now we got that done. Uh, usually just a little tip here when I as I progress and, and make updates to my website I'll continue making copies of my website folder but what I'll do when I make the copy is I'll actually do a website hyphen uh, June uh, 15 something like that so I know when that copy was made so if I ever really make a mess of something and I can't figure out how to fix it I can always go back to the most recent copy and then take go from there if I have to just a tip for you. If you don't make copies, you, you're eventually going to find yourself uh, pulling your hair out because you did something, you can't figure out where you went wrong, and uh, you need to get, go back to a certain date in your life without restoring your computer. Okay, So let's move on to actually installing this in our web editor. We're going to open up our web editor right now. There it is. Typically when you open up Expression Web, if you've ever opened a website with uh, the editor before, the last website will be in view, like you see right here. There's some old website already there. So I'm going to ask you to click on the Site Close button. That way we're starting clean and uh, fresh. Now click on the site once again. This time select Open Site our little browse window is going to pop open here, or open site window with a browse button. Click that browse button. Now this is the reason why I suggest you build on your desktop, because you can just scroll over here to the little list on the side, click the desktop, go find your template folder, click into it, keep clicking into it until you find the website folder, and click into the website folder. Okay, once you see location website, and once you see website is the final folder up here, then just click open and open once again. Okay, now your site's open in your editor, you're ready to roll. But I'm going to run through a few tips here first to make sure that your life is as smooth and easy as mine is when building websites. 
these are just some things that I've done or habits I've gotten into over the years that have really helped me uh, reduce trouble spots. Um, the, the build time is a lot faster and it's a lot easier to work with a web editor. So first thing we do is we go to the site, site settings, and make sure that this little checkbox is, is checked. Maintain the site using hidden metadata files. If that's not checked, your library files, the global components, or shared components, I should say, they won't update. Make sure it's checked, click OK. If it's not checked, just put a check mark there and click OK. Now, the next thing is resetting our workspace layout. Um, if you go to the Panels tab and hit Reset Current Workspace, it's probably going to reset to exactly the way it was when you first opened up the program. And we have boxes and tabs and all sorts of cool things all over the place, but it sort of takes up a lot of our real estate. Um, I like to have just the folder list and my, my site view panel uh, in view. Everything else I can open up when I need it, but for now I'm going to hide it. So I'm just going to close the little boxes off by clicking the X's over here. And if you do the same thing, at least when you're going through the tutorials, your editor will look pretty much the same as mine, so it'll make maybe a little bit more sense. Um, the next thing is making sure that the uh, website folder is the root folder, and you'll know that because these three, these the, the templates or the site or the library or the layouts, you'll have folders here and pages over here, and the pages would be index or whatever came in your package. You know, the basic package is only going to have like page one, two, three, four in an index page. The pro package are going to have all the layouts for your particular theme and maybe additional folders in here like enhancements and that sort of a thing. But basically your pages and your folders will be in view over here. Now this folder list, sometimes that gets turned off or nixed out of place by mistake. And some folks get a little bit lost. Oh, where do I go? Well, if you go back to your panels, you can turn it back on. But the better way is just Alt F1 on your keyboard. Okay, you can just do an Alt F1, Alt F1 to turn it back on. But the easiest thing to remember is go to the Panels tab, there's the folder list, and the shortcut key is right over here. Now we've talked about the site settings. If something in your site just doesn't update, you made a change to a library page, you've saved it, you've previewed it, it doesn't update, just go back and make sure that this is still enabled. Very rarely have I seen it become disabled, but it has happened. The next thing is the visual aids. Let's just open up a page. When you open up a page, the visual aids are the little lines and score marks and things that sort of tell you, you know, tables and div containers and all that sort of stuff on the page, what they are and whatnot. You don't really need that. It's okay maybe if you're building a website and you're using the design window to help you line things up. Uh, but seeing as how we have a template with things already pre-built for you, you can probably turn them off. If you go to the view menu, visual aids and just where it says show, click it, it just gets rid of all the excess lines. And while we're talking about that, when you're looking in the page, if there is a component that uses any type of JavaScript, which is pretty much all of the um, header components, um, anything that has any sort of interactivity or action or motion, probably has some type of JavaScript applied to it, you're not going to see it have any action, any motion, or even see it visible in the page itself because this is a design window think of it as a very very fancy word editor it doesn't animate anything it doesn't show anything with javascript it's basically just a big fancy text editor and it tries to emulate as best it can what your page would look like in a web browser but it's not even close to being 100 percent it's only estimates okay big fancy word editor that's all you need to think of it as because any of the actual functionality just won't work. Now, my favorite thing for everybody is to turn or change your CSS editor properties. Go to the Tools panel, go to your Page Editor Options, and go to the CSS tab. You can leave it set to Auto Style up here. Change everything else to CSS Inline Styles instead of CSS Classes. The reason being is, when you're working in a library page and you attempt to change something like a font, font size, font color, anything using any of the um, tools up here, like for the font color, highlight, uh, that sort of a thing, if you use any of those built-in tools, it will create something called an auto style. It will apply it to the head of the library page. Well, the content within the head of the library page is not transferred over to the web template pages. 
it's only the content within the body. I know, probably lost a few of you on that one, but a long story short is if you set everything to inline, it'll simply apply whatever you want to do with your fonts, it'll apply it directly to the font and not to the page, which gives you a lot more control. Some folks may argue it's not as semantic as it is applying a, a global class to a page. However, Microsoft doesn't uh, apply those auto styles to a, a base style sheet. It only applies to the page anyway, so really it's not that semantic to start with. Next, compatibility checkers. This is one of my favorites here. You're going to see this uh, little thing down here and you might have some questions. And if you click it, you can't really see in the video. Maybe if I can move it up here a little bit. Right, you see this little question mark, and if you do a little, you can go to error or run compatibility checker. Right, well, if you run the compatibility checker, you can do a current page, you can, you know, versus, right, which HTML or, or editor you want to compare it with. Um, before you do that, you really A, have to have a great understanding of HTML and JavaScript and CSS. Because the compatibility checker is going to throw up a whole bunch of information about, uh, Anything we do with JavaScript that it can't read, it's going to throw it as an error. Well, that's fantastic. If you understand how the JavaScript is linked in, it makes perfect sense because the error, the error compatibility checker just can't go into the JavaScript files and verify colors and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the other thing is because we use what's called WebBots or includes, it throws it up as a warning, uh, but it's actually a, a, it's called a false warning or a false positive. It's actually something that's even been noted by Microsoft, but they haven't changed within Expression Web 4. Uh, the includes do work. They do work and they are actually valid when you validate your web page against the w3.org validation service. Uh, just the editor isn't up to date and it tells you there's, there's a potential c compatibility issue. So in a nutshell, ignore it because we've actually validated these websites for you against the w3.org prior to packaging. We do it manually and we do it online to make sure that all the JavaScript and everything's sort of running and can be uh, analyzed properly. Uh, in a nutshell, the built-in tools are great guidelines, but you really have to have a firm grip on your, H, on your HTML, your JavaScript, and your CSS to understand what those errors are. And if you don't, it's just going to make a whole world of no sense to you. So I would say just ignore it. If, you're going to, if you want to validate your site, uh, put it online and check it against the w3.validation. That's probably the only thing I could really recommend. These built-in checkers, like I said, they, they don't do a thorough job because they're not actually checking against the page that is displayed in a browser. They're only trying to validate the code they see in the design window. And because we use a lot of JavaScript, as all websites do now with jQuery and whatnot, it can't read into that.